Welcome back. Peaky Blinders podcast presented to, to you by Salty Nerd Podcast. Um, we're talking about episode two of season one. This is a great follow-up to episode one. I thought the introduction of episode one was a little clunky. You, you know, we get we get all these characters we've never met before. So everything's kind of just like, hey, this is this person. This is this person. However, this follow-up, this was a banger of an episode. I had a lot of fun with it. And it, it just, it really gets you your teeth into the, the family dynamic yep. and what they're doing. You get a little bit more of an explanation. Tommy, in uh, multiple scenes in this episode, like sits everybody down and says, this is going to happen, then this is going to happen, then this is going to happen, then this is going to happen. We're all like, oh, thank you, Tommy, for yeah. telling me what's going to happen in this episode. We appreciate it. They do. Yeah, we really do. Because it, like, it's, it's yeah. like, one of those, um, like one of those heist movies where they get together at the table and they say, okay, guys, the third act of this movie is going to be this, 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 and this, what, and this. You know what else, too? And you're going to break into the safe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and now I, it kind of makes a little more sense in terms of, who's related to who outside of Tommy and his older brother. Right. Mm -hmm. Because initially I was just like, okay, I think Helena or Helen McCurry is the sister. It seems Aunt like, because it seems like there's five siblings. There's three brothers and then there's two sisters mm -hmm. because you got, I guess Tommy's the middle brother. Yes. And then you got the younger one. I don't know what his name is. The thick one. The thick one. <laughs> the thick one. I'm carrying up. Arthur, John, Tommy, Finn. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. And then the sisters, I take it that the one who's, the commie. Fucking the commie. <laughs> Elena. She, Helena, thank you. Uh, Ada. 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 Thank you. Why did I say Elena? I don't know. I don't know. Either. Because I brought up the name of the actress. Uh, yeah, probably. I guess she's the oldest sister. I, do, I only know of one sister. Yeah, there's Hang only on, one I'm going to bring it up. So wait, who's Helena McCary's character? Who's uh, the that's Aunt Polly. Oh, that's Polly. Yeah, the was, Aunt, Aunt Polly. Saying. Oh, the, so the real, the real, legitimately the operations. Aunt. Okay, so she's, she's not. It's aunt. not like a title. It's like she is their aunt. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. She's yeah. the sister of their mother, I believe. Mm -hmm. So she, that, okay, that so would be your aunt. aunt. So there's <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm so just saying how they're related. So they're four siblings then. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so Arthur, Tommy, Finn, uh, Ada. Yeah. John. Okay. John, what, what, Who's what? John? John is the. He's not the little kid brother. There's li Finn is the little kid. Yeah, John is the one that is there. They go out and oh, the brooding one, the, the one at the table. One, one that they said you're the dumb one. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so okay. that's John. It's not Finn. That's John. So right. it's Finn. Finn, Finn, Finn is, is a kid. kid. He's the like little kid. He's the little, little kid. kid. Have we oh, seen him yet? Yeah, yeah he, he did. He's the one that ran episode. in to take the the picture of the king. Oh, okay. But he was oh, the he's the Shelby episode, too. Hmm? He's the first. He was in the first episode too. Yeah, I thought he was somebody's. He's remember in the first episode. Uh, Aunt Polly is like, you left your gun sitting around. Yes. Finn grabbed it, yes. almost blew off Ada's tits. Yeah, oh, yes, I do remember okay. that. Kid. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. There is more explanation this time. And I was really questioning Tommy's intelligence in many ways, but we are seeing it more in this episode. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I I appreciated this episode about how we really got more into the roles everybody plays. Yeah. You know, the first episode was these are the characters. Yeah. Get a really brief introduction to everybody. Everyone has and, the same haircut. Yeah. And this, ep <laughs> this episode, you really start dialing into everybody's personalities a little bit. Yeah. You know, how uh, Oppenheimer is like really <laughs> in charge. It really is. You know, yeah. and Arthur's he's, the figurehead. He's got the brain. He's, he's like what? we said, he's six steps ahead of everybody already. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, We're Aunt getting... Polly's the, 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 the heart and soul of she everything. Keeps, she keeps everyone in line. Everybody else is just kind of Along for the ride. Stupid. <laughs> but it, but, it's, yeah, but so, it seems it seems that Arthur is the figurehead just because he's the oldest. Yeah, yeah. There are two great scenes in this episode where it kind of really establishes like the hierarchy of the Peaky Blinders. You know, the first is a uh, meeting with Sam Neill in, in that restaurant. Mm -hmm, yes. And then the second one is in the pub when uh, the second big bad of the season. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah the end. We're getting the well, dynamic of the world and who is uh, in the gang and yeah. like who are these bad guys and who are these bad guys. Yeah. And what exactly the peaky fucking blinders do and in, also, in yeah. Brum or we Birmingham are getting a glimpse into the violence yes. that is just commonplace. Yeah. But, but more than that, it's kind of interesting to see. How how like, like Polly and the oldest brother, uh, what's his name again? Arthur. The Arthur. Arthur. Uh, how Polly and Arthur kind of like see their position in the world and, and see like, you know, like their limitations. And Tommy just sees none of that. Like, well, like he he's always thinking like, okay, I mean, this is how things could be. Before well, we get going, really quick, I just you know, Arthur and Thomas <laughs> are cool with each other's roles, right? The older brother's okay. There's some chafing. with the middle brother. Because let me tell you, um, I'm Arthur's the older brother, mm -hmm. and if I was in an organization and my little brother wasn't one in charge, I'd have some issues. Okay, so well, it'd be a stand. Hold on, Jude, Jude so, go ahead. Go I'm ahead. struggling. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. 
Arthur cannot see past um, like the first step in a plan. Yes. And Tommy sees the big picture. Yes. But Polly has been running the operation While they're for at war. five years. While they're at war. So Polly's actually having a, a, a harder time yeah. letting go of that power. Um, because like, you know, the men come home and all of a sudden women uh, are the, the, the lesser creatures. Well, that's the way it should be. Yes, God that's damn. correct. <laughs> okay, then. Go make a sandwich. Um, <laughs> I don't think she's in the mood for that yeah, shit today, dude. Definitely not in the mood. <laughs> definitely not in the mood. Um, so the thing is, I noticed, it seems that there's bitterness from Polly, but she's accepted it because, again, this is the times. They're not accept, They're not putting modern sensibilities into this. They understand it. But she's still a bit bitter, but she's accepted it. However, Arthur, here and there, I've noticed that there's been some slight chafing. He gets a little mad. He's like, I'm the oldest. Sometimes when Tommy doesn't tell him stuff. Yeah. He, he feels like he's out of the loop. Yes. Yeah. So that's why. I'd yeah. Say. Polly still does have. So the, the the power struggle with Polly and Thomas, though, is that Polly still does. Um, she's still a necessary part of the operation. Of yeah. And when Tommy doesn't tell her something, usually it fucking matters. Yeah. When he doesn't tell Arthur something, it's just like, oh, mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. whatever, Arthur, just go have a drink. And there's deference, at least to her, to some degree, compared yeah. to with Arthur. Because Polly's moving parts around, and so is Tommy. Yes. And sometimes they're not moving Jelly. parts yeah. around with each other in communication, mm -hmm. and that can cause some... And, the, and, and Tommy... He's very much on his own. Like he's going to go do his own thing. Because in the very opening scene, where we go, we go to this gypsy in, encampment uh, to trade out this horse with the lees. With, yeah, um, mm -hmm. Tommy's already got. He already knows what's going to happen. Yeah, yes. he's walking in full tilt. Okay, he already won that game. He already. Yeah, he's, he's like, I'm already going to do this. And, and, and Arthur, wish. Arthur, the whole time is like, What are we doing here, Tommy? Yeah. You're not mm -hmm. going to trade the family car for a freaking horse. And he's like, Yes, I am. And he's just, you know, it's like <laughs> Arthur's always a step behind. And I have yeah. to say, in this scene had me questioning Tommy's intelligence. How so? Because I was like, what the fuck are you doing? You're already you're pissing off this. You already did this heist that's gone badly. Yeah. Mm. And now you're pissing off. You're getting another enemy with the gypsies. You well, think that like yeah. temp their tempers got the yeah. best of them yeah. and that they're not going to be able to control themselves and be like, Mm -hmm. Down for business. Well, that's what, yeah. I mean, they 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 do this trade with the horse, and everything's on the level, and everything's cool, and they're like, okay, we agreed, we're gonna flip these coins. I don't I don't know exactly how but, that but game works. But it wasn't on the level. Up. What do you mean? Because it was he he had this thing all set up to begin yes. with. Yes, yeah. he did. Oh yeah, he cheated. This Tommy the, cheated. He, yeah, he with knew. The coin he, yeah. he went there to start a war with those guys. Yeah. So, so we could get to the end scene of this episode. Yeah. Because yeah. that's he's the only way guys. he's gonna is that get. Who he was talking about? Yes. yes. Yeah. Whoa. So, when, so basically, what happened is that it seemed that. I think that what happened with well, we'll get to that. But I think the yeah, thing let's that focus happened, on the, the on thing the that happened at the thing. end thing. I think that was planned. That, that was that was planned. that was the end uh, result of what he went there to the so Tommy, to the Lees. Tommy went there. He went to the Lees. He went there was, to start a war to yes. start a fight. Yeah, yes. but to, to make it sound like they started it because yeah. the yeah because the Lees were already in in fights with uh, what's that what's Billy the big, Kemper Billy Kemper yeah yeah, Kemper, yeah. yeah. Um, so Good. Tommy goes to the Lees camp. He makes up this thing that they're going to like bet for a horse, for a car. Uh, Tommy wins, but Tommy cheats. Uh, but nobody knows. Tommy has set this whole thing up. Mm -hmm. So he wins the bet. They think that they're like getting out and the deal is done. He's going to take the car for a joyride and we're going to get out of here. And then Tommy picks a fight mm -hmm. because there's like some guys like down by the river Mouthing bank. Off. They're, they're, they're just laughing. Mm -hmm. And they're speaking another language. They don't even they don't even speak Tommy, the same language. Does Tommy in, know how to speak? They're speaking in Romany, probably. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. they're not speaking um they're not speaking English. No. So Tommy turns around and he goes, Are you laughing at my brother? Tommy picks this fight. Yes, yeah. right. he does. But he knows and, it's gonna set Arthur off too. He instigates yes. it. And yeah. then all of a sudden, all three of the brothers are just like in a bloodbath right now. Yeah. So he starts yeah. this war with the Lees, and this is the 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 main uh thing that needs to happen for us to get to the end of this episode. It's all orchestrated. No, he's no, playing chess. I, no, like you said, he's playing chess. Everybody else playing chess. No, I don't yeah. think that, I think the horse, what happened, well, no, we're not get to that. Yet. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get to the horse. <laughs> we need to start breaking the oh, show well, down. Oh, they cheated no. too because they gave him a lame horse. Well, did they? Because I do it's, think in this show, overall, I do think there's some supernatural stuff happening. There's a smidgen. Also, they're all con artists. When you think, sure. about, when you think about it, particularly with the visual of him walking this pale mare this oh, the, blackened, the, <laughs> gross, dirty, grimy Birmingham horse of States. death. Yes, yeah. Thank the you. pale horse of death. I did a little uh, dance, of it. dance of the dragon. Mm -hmm. such yeah. as Smoked a little peyote before he came. <laughs> <laughs> a little smidgen, opium. Smidgen. <laughs> so, um, I think we need to let Matt start breaking this thing down. Well, the next scene 
is uh, is Detective Campbell, which I believe is Sam Neill's Sam character. Neal. You name. can just call him Sam Neill if you want. I don't know, Sam just call him the paleontologist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sam Neill's in this movie <laughs> or in the show. Uh, he he opens up with his squad of of police officers of coppers out there in the streets of Birmingham, and he's like, "Okay, we're gonna raid every single house in right here." In the middle of and you, and Freddy's fuck fest, fuck dude. Fest. And mind well, you, mind rude. you, this is during while Tommy and his brothers are out of town. Yeah, the, yeah, the fair. So he knows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but he's been watching them, and he and he did it because in this way, it's actually kind of a smart thing he's doing. He's doing it to one make it look like uh one. He's trying to undermine the Peaky Fulcum Blinders authority right. in the Birmingham streets. Yeah, the they, coppers are, are no longer under their thumb. Basically. Exactly. And yeah. two, he's also trying to make it look like this they were in on this. Mm -hmm. They were working Yeah, he together. wants to undermine them. Yeah. Yeah. Which is smart. I mean, that's what I love about this show, too, is they always set up the villain to be just as competent as Tommy, which sets up a struggle for mm -hmm. him where he has to overcome them and show up that and he's he's that the smarter is how person. You do that's how you do it. Stakes are real. It's yeah. not just it was always in you all the time. No, fuck it. You have to level. <laughs> you, up. Yeah, you have to level up. You got to level up yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um. So we w w Ada and her boy Frank. Right. Freddy. Is Freddy. Freddy. Um. They're they're Freddy in the, the, the middle communist. of they're in the middle of the action. Right. And these coppers come out and they start raiding everybody's homes and they're like, we've got to get the frick out of here. We I can't be seen with you or. They don't want to have the Shelby's tied to the communists, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> so um, they they bounce out and uh, are able to escape. And uh, she holds up with somebody that Freddie knows. Yes. It's just like the neighbor. It's just like downstairs. the neighbor. And she's like, I don't want a Shelby in my house. Yeah. What are you nuts? Yeah. <laughs> she's like, I don't want to bring that heat on me. Uh, but then they end up finding a receipt for, I believe, a some kind of a medication yes. iron for her. Tablet. Yeah, she iron. hasn't started her period, and she thinks it's because she's low on well, iron. Must be low on iron. Child. No, you <laughs> sweet summer child. You've been banging for Let's like months. Say, yeah, <laughs> the seed is strong. Yeah, and uh, so that's and what like, all of these people grew up together. So Tommy and Freddie, who Ada is fucking, they, they were best friends. They're best friends. And they war went buddies. to school together. They were in the war together. Freddie saved his life. They have a lot of history together. Yeah, Freddie saved his life. But I guess whatever happened when they came back. Freddie went full communist. Well, and, Tommy's been turning a blind eye to all of the shit that that Freddie's been up to because yeah. of their history. Yes, mm -hmm. but they're not on the same on the same no. side on the no. same team, and that's why Freddie's constantly saying, "I'm not afraid of Thomas Shelby." Oh, is that your brother? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, for real. Yeah. I'm not afraid of him. <laughs> he just like freaks he, like, out. Looks around first, yeah, and he's yeah. like, about that. "I said, bitch." But this guy, this guy irritated me by the end of this episode. But we'll get there in a minute. The, <laughs> yeah, the next yeah. big scene that I absolutely loved, and I, I can't wait to hear Jude's thoughts on this as well as the rest of the crew. But um, uh, Detective Campbell, Sam Neill, comes into uh, to the church I while Aunt Polly scene. is lighting candles as yeah. like a like a to honor the dead or something like that along mm -hmm. those lines, uh -huh. and. Um, he basically kind of knocks her down. He's like, oh, you lighting those candles for the Shelby boys? And he's like, no. She says, no, I'm lighting them for the men who died in France, unlike you. Yeah, not, not yeah. you, huh? Not you, because yeah. you didn't actually go and fight. Like, there was, they're holding this. This whole episode has been like, hey, <laughs> he didn't fight in the war. <laughs> what a, what a bitch. pussy. What a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then I love what he does, because he gets a little rough with her. And then he kind of. This is just, my favorite part of this. And then scene. she kisses yeah. him. And she's yeah. like, "Well, I thought you were gonna, you know." He's like, I thought you were sending mixed signals. <laughs> <laughs> um, Campbell, yeah. it thrives on the illusion of him being a good guy. Mm -hmm. yes. So for her to 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 make a sexual advance, he was <clears throat> baffled and disgusted that it, that could possibly be construed from his behavior because he's yeah. the good guy, right? Yeah, because he like he even wipes his mouth with yeah. a handkerchief. He's like, oh god. Yeah, that didn't happen. So not don't only, tell anybody that happened. Yeah, so it seems like to, like like Polly is like, oh, I don't take no shit, and then he's like, oh yeah, take this, and she just ups the ante, and she's like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's oh, just I'm so totally, sorry. totally freaks oh, out. Oh, did I did I get that wrong? And oh, the way you pushed me up against the wall, and and you know what? <laughs> and I think those types of villains are so fascinating because you have the people who are just cartoonishly mustache twirling evil, mm -hmm. right? and then you have the people who, in their mind, they're right. Well, he has a code, and then yeah. you have people like him who no, I'm the hero in the mm -hmm. story, yeah. and I love that because yeah. then there, it's almost kind of like Forrest Whitaker in the Shield season five, where in his mind he's the good guy, but you're doing all this shady shit. Don't hate me, but I've never seen the Shield. Mm -hmm. But I've seen I, up to see ironically, that. everyone in Peaky Blinders is a bad guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I don't know. Like, let's look at this for real. I know no, Cam Campbell's the bad guy in and from he's the, the antagonist. He's, he's the, the antagonist, antagonist to the Peaky Blinders. Yes, but he is in no way that we've seen so far. And I don't know if there's anything that's going to be revealed later on in the season. But 
the worst thing that they can dig up on this guy is that he didn't go to the war. Yeah. That's the worst thing they came up with. That's the most that, dirt they that, could get on him. That's not just the worst thing. Basically, like, he he made his reputation fighting his own people in Ireland. Ah. So, so like, like he's, he's viewed as a traitor uh, just all around. So. And he doesn't even drink. Or what a fucking dork. traitor. <laughs> You're not Irish unless you drink. Uh, <laughs> what I love about Polly is that, like, like, we talked about how when the boys were at war, she took on the masculine role mm-hmm. and she was running shit. And now that the boys are back, she's been relegated back to, like, a woman's role. Mm-hmm. But Polly is so smart that she will use everything that you think about women against you. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's great. She I will like embody everything that you think about a woman, and she'll just embody it, and then she'll use it as a weapon. Mm-hmm. I bet she's great in the sack. Polly? Yeah. She was probably in control. Of <laughs> oh, she's a dom. She's definitely a power top. <laughs> she, had her, she had her hand around your throat the if, whole time. If you're <laughs> weak, if you show any sign of weakness, <laughs> she, 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 she will hand. split <laughs> that shit like dry wood. She's got a switchblade in one hand and her hand around your throat. It's like, don't you come yeah. yet. <laughs> <laughs> you better make me kill. You better make me fucking cool. Oh my God. <laughs> Inappropriate. Over here doing arm circle. Yeah. Inappropriate. That, you uh, better not get me pregnant. <laughs> That went somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and so they're back. The yeah, they get back. back. They have like a uh, an impromptu family meeting in the house, which is just on the other side of the wall of the bookies, like, like I don't know what they call the the bullpen or whatever for the book keeping uh, racketeer that they go have on. But I love that their house is literally attached to their underground uh-huh. business yeah. that they run. Yeah. Keep the um, business close. But they're basically just catching up on everything. They're they're talking like they they have to reconvene after the coppers come and raid the whole town. They want to figure out okay, what do they know? What they find out? What's going on? What's Who is this guy? Step? What's our next step? Yeah, what's our next step? And then that's when Tommy. I think that's when Detective Campbell actually gets on Tommy's radar for like in like a real yes. way. Yes. He's like, oh my god, they're actually going into my territory and looking for these. Well, like in the well, last episode when he kidnaps Arthur and beats the shit out of him. Eh, just another Tuesday. But this, hmm. means this is serious. Well, well yeah. Polly's the only one who knows that Tommy actually has these weapons amongst yes. the, the peaky crowd. Yeah. Um, but what's interesting is that Polly basically breaks it down. It's like, look, they hit all the businesses that pay us for protection mm-hmm. and then they left our bar alone mm-hmm. to make it look like we were in exactly. on this. Exactly, that's what yeah. it is. And, and so like she's breaking down how manipulative and dangerous this guy is and that's when Tommy's like, like okay, this could be a problem. Yeah. yeah. But I think Tommy also... Like, this is part of the payoff for why he held on to those weapons yes. in episode one. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So Tommy's taking all this in, and and he's basically, like, you know, thinking about the chess moves ahead. Yes. Because now he realizes that uh, this guy, because, uh, you know, uh, Sam Neill showed his hand with Polly, where he's like, okay, I want to talk to the real guy in charge. I believe his name is Tommy. Yeah. Yes. And so Tommy yes. now knows that that the guy knows what's up. Mm-hmm. So now he has to plan out um, how he's going to respond. To he's this. not just a typical thug. Like, he's not just a typical police thug. He's actually and, like, oh, this guy actually has... Some. And Tommy has this great line where he's like, you don't parlay when you're on your back foot. So, like, he's like, I got to strike back and then come at it from a position of yep. strength. Yeah. yeah, and Charlie uh, is the person who shows to Tommy, like, you're at war with the Lees now mm-hmm. because his name has been etched into a bullet. And Charlie is the only other member of the gang that knows about the guns. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah he's, so, and he's their uncle. He's the uncle. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And etching their name into a bullet, that's like a, almost like a curse, like well, a declaration. I, I have war. a bullet yeah. with your name on it. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. We're coming for you. What a Tommy. calling card, though. I know. Isn't it so bad? Yeah. yeah, here's my card. Here's my card. So both <laughs> and, and, there, and, there, and there's, and there's Jesus a little, Christ, man. and there's a little more to that uh, declaration of war, as we'll see later in the episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, uh, but, but that's another great example of how like other people in the gang just don't understand what Tommy's plan is, mm-hmm. and he keeps it close to his chest. Well, as we've seen by the other brothers being kind of dumb as fuck, um, it's probably better that you keep them kind of like here's what you need to do at this point. Yeah. I'll lead you through the rest of it. They're soldiers. Yeah. You you tell soldiers what their orders are. You don't invite them into the general's quarters to talk about strategy. He's Rob right. Stark. Yeah. They're Edmure Tully. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so Tommy's response to this is uh, to burn photos of the king in response to the raid from the coppers, which is like super not cool no. <laughs> like to the to the authorities that be. What a psychological move. And it, it, yeah, yes. right? Because it's not it's so like non-violent. We don't want right. our like, beloved king to see us. Yeah, yeah. Like we so can't we have to burn his pictures. <laughs> <laughs> but it like it sends this message and it sends a message so clear and concise that um the freaking prime minister is he the prime minister? He's not the prime minister. He's He's the home secretary. He's the home secretary. And here's the thing that made it, it was actually, it's so genius about what Tommy did Mm -hmm. is that 
when he invited that reporter to come talk to him, right? what he did is because instead of seeing him as a, oh, he's a gangster, he's this. He's he a businessman. But no, 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 not just it's, that. He's a community leader. He also used his <laughs> war record as a shield. That's right. Sure, yeah. Because he said, I'm a war hero. I've won this. Mm -hmm. And this is what they're doing. I fought in the Somme. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that right there, and that's getting broadcast, and that's when it got to the Home Secretary's attention. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he was just like, you're not supposed starts, to. Starts reading it in the papers. Yeah. Because Detective Campbell's whole thing was to keep this all under wraps. Yes. He's like, I don't want any of this in the papers. Yes. I don't want any of this in the He's news. Like, all right, I'll go arrest him. The fuck you will. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You can't do that. You're not going to arrest a war hero. Yeah. It's yeah. It, the, the manipulation is just so mm. brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> this is perfect. Chef's kiss. Yeah. It's good stuff. Uh, and just just real quick, I know I'm probably going to do this at least once an episode, but the cinematography for the scene when the, the coppers are raiding downtown Birmingham, and it, it's just, it's shot Beautiful. with this this long, empty road with the cops all in perfect uniform, mm -hmm. and just, it's just, ah. And facing, and facing a certain direction, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. And then there was the silence before the violence. Yeah, it's so good, dude. To whoever freaking yeah. put this show together is genius. Um, They're fucking blind. To. <laughs> it's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, all right, so then news gets back. Um, this is when Detective Campbell gets the call from Winston Churchill, and he's like, "It's it's after midnight, and Winston Churchill's calling me." Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Either it's good or bad. <laughs> it's either it's, it's oh shot. my god, or like, oh, he doesn't yeah. have whiskey. He has a glass of water, water. and he walks. He goes, "Okay, I gotta get yeah. the ball." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Water, courage, all right. Guy. Liquid yeah. courage. Yeah. One. I mean, during this time, it's probably hard to find clean water. So yeah, is that more yeah. prestigious to be like, look, I have a glass of clean water. That is sitting that, on it as opposed to whis whiskey. Well, yeah, especially in Birmingham. Uh, but Winston Churchill just lays into this guy, and he's like, "I hired you to do one specific thing, and you're fucking it up." Yeah. Don't do that. And then he just hangs up. And well, like actually, before he hangs up, he's like, "Yeah, can I just get one information? Who was the one who hired the reporter? Or who was the one who reported this?" And they're like, it "Says here, Tommy Shelby." Click. <laughs> That's all. He just tells him a name and then he hangs up. And now he's basically been hamstrung because yeah. now he can't go out. Well, the gauntlet better. has been thrown. Yes. Right? By the way, I, I just want to say how much it tickles me that their bar is called the Garrison. That's, that's I didn't prison. realize that. Yeah. That's that. awesome. Yeah. Good deal. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Because they were talking about all the different bars and they were like, except for the Garrison. And I was like, oh, I fucking love that name. Yeah. It's almost as good as the Slaughtered Cock, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Warrior. That's my number okay, one. Okay, I was, yeah. I was like, where did we Oh, go? you haven't seen that. Right. Okay, so the, there's a bar in Warrior called the Slaughtered Cock, and yes. that's where everybody goes. It's, 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 yeah, it's the rooster. Clearly. Hilarious. <laughs> Good old chicken wings. Uh, Ada and Polly have a, a breakfast morning tea and with each other. Polly and Polly is a, instantly. She's yeah. detective. Yeah. yeah. She, she literally just like she's like, let me see stand this up. She stand freaking up. Cu she just cups that woman's breast. She's like, well, first off, how she's, late she's are you? Not witchcraft. <laughs> well, first knows. off, she just looks at her and she's like, stand up. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then she's like, looks and like, how late are you? And then she's like, it's like a week, maybe five or three <laughs> or seven. <laughs> Oh, yeah. or, uh, well, Charles, before that, she she looks at what she's eating. Yeah. And that's what tips her. Was it raw bread with jam or something? Yeah. Like, no, no. Like, like, like she she had like a very eclectic breakfast mm -hmm. uh, um, oh. assortment in front of her. And, uh, you know, she's kind of like eating yeah. in, in front of Polly. And Polly's like, wait a minute. Yeah. She's way too hungry. <laughs> yeah. She, she clocks her body before that's what I saw, Ada yeah. even sits down. Okay. And then when she starts eating, she's like, hold on. Stand up. But yeah. also just shows how in tune Polly is with the whole oh, family. Oh, Polly. Oh, yeah. Polly's got witchcraft. <laughs> she does. Yeah. She's I'm a witch. telling you, there is a supernatural element to this show. Yeah. Absolutely. These curses and She's these- probably this, got a crystal ball. This gypsy wit, you know, witchcraft thing that they got going on. I think in the show, they do believe it's real. It's a, and they, it's a they well present done. It, they present it to be real. It's a well done undercurrent where yeah. it doesn't overwhelm yeah. the show. It's right. It keeps it grounded, but it's just kind of in the backdrop and it mm -hmm. works so it doesn't distract from the bigger narrative. Yeah. Yeah. So Polly takes her. To, uh, does she take her to go get checked by a doctor yes. to like verify? Yes, okay. yeah. in like a slum area. Just a, yeah, this yeah. is the grossest yeah. place. Quote unquote doctor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. very yeah. sanitary. They don't want any records of it's, this. It's basically like I think a midwife because yeah. Yeah. even though the thing is the Shelbys are known, they have a reputation, and to see this in an area that's known in the main place they operate would be a problem. Yeah, and to show anything feel, other than strength is just. A no no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What were we gonna say, V? I said I think it's kind of interesting how they're also worried about reputations and, and stuff like this. When you know, I can see watching a show like Downton Abbey, where these aristocrats and these rich people are worried about 
this kind of stuff. You know, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, well, they're worried about the, but, the but mashed these, potatoes being cold right. when they serve dinner. <laughs> these, these are gangsters. These, yeah. these, this, it's funny to me that they still have that. But there's still a caste system. Right. Amongst it's them. just everybody's so worried about their reputation mm -hmm. that you can't be seen leaving that doctor's it's, office it's, or whatever. I mean, it's almost, it's almost kind of like, you know, to bring it back to A Song of Ice and Fire, it's kind of like when you reputation... You have to have a reputation to be feared. If you're no longer yeah. feared, then people will not respect you. And if they don't respect you, then all that protection is mm -hmm. not going to mean jack. But beyond that, like there's like cultural significance because like they're like a Catholic family. And so too. if she has like a child out of wedlock, yeah, yeah. she's no longer a virgin. She yeah, can't I mean, be married of off. Time too. Yeah, yeah, she's not yeah, pure yeah, anymore. Yeah, so it, it, it's like there's a social stigma that goes yeah. along with it where basically mm -hmm. like if she had a child out of wedlock a and, the bastard. and the father is like out of the picture no other man's going to want to marry her and take yeah. on that responsibility. And so she's going to be like a spinster when she's older. And, and this is the type of thing that Polly's more concerned about. Yeah. Whereas Tommy's more concerned about like the um, family image or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. The, the yeah. perception. Polly, Polly's worried about Ada on like a personal level. Tommy's worried about what Ada means for the family. The family. Right. So the two very different approaches Cause this is, cause to the this problem. Is, this is Irish Catholic at this point. Yeah. I think that, yeah, they branched out at least. That, that um, but shout out to, uh, to, you know, of the times, we were just talking about that. Like, Ada's still smoking a cigarette outside. Oh, yeah. It's yes. just like, yes. it's just normal. Just rub some whiskey on it. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, be fine. Um, the next scene we get is uh, Tommy checking out this new horse. Now, I want to clarify oh, oh, something oh, with oh, you guys. Oh, but before you go any further, yeah, go ahead. I just realized. Ada, uh, not Ada, Polly's saying, okay, we need to get rid of this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She, well, she encourages, I think it's later on, she encourages her to do it because mm -hmm. she tells her like a personal story about when she had to do the same thing. Oh, it's a little bit, okay. another couple scenes yeah. for And, and okay. when they're at the train station, they're actually going to the place where the yeah. Yeah. Uh, would be yeah. done. Well, she goes, she goes Is it, will he marry you? Well, because if he'll marry you, everything's good. Yeah. yeah. And that's the conversation yeah. they have just outside of the well, midwife's office. He can't marry him because he's a comic. That's, that's what it was. Where it was like, <laughs> who is the father? And she finally tells her. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, well, where is he? She's like, he promise he's going to come back. And he's like, she's, they never fucking come back, you know? She says, there's <laughs> so many words for women in your position. But they don't have one. a word for the men that just don't have to come back. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and, You're going to uh, have to live with this for the rest of your life. Uh, yeah. Fun fact about the smoking in the show. So Talk like, um, uh, is it Cillian Murphy? Killian. Killian, Killian Murphy. God okay, so Killian Robert Murphy. Robert. Oppenheimer. <laughs> uh, Robert. So he, I, I think in the first two seasons of this show, he smoked over 6,000 cigarettes. Oh my Jesus. Jesus. But, but the thing is, is that uh, he made sure that the cigarettes were herbal cigarettes. Mm -hmm. um, so like, even though like he's, he's like smoking in every scene, like uh, apparently the stuff that he's smoking was so weak that people couldn't even call it cigarettes. It's still mm. smoke. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, it's still smoke, but there, there's like an don't have to inhale. Her herbal nature to it. Yeah. Because, but, you so, know. so like, but uh, basically like he knew he was going to be smoking so much. He's like, I need to like dial back on. Yeah, these things. yeah. He looks yeah. really cool sitting there with a cigarette yeah. in his hand. Who doesn't? It works. <laughs> the little hat, the boy cap. Mm -hmm. What were you gonna say? I, I smoke some herbal cigarettes. Everything's fine. Yeah, it's good. It's yeah, fine. It's herbal. It's just, okay. Yeah. What is that like herbal? Herbal or so is like that... some Ricola cigarettes? <laughs> Ricola. Non, non nicotine. <laughs> herbal, no, herbal. nicotine. Non addictive. Which oh. I mean, he's forced to smoke six thousand cigarettes over the course of a season. At least they're not addictive. <laughs> <laughs> Remember <laughs> spice. And they came out with spice. That yes. Was like or, weed, or, but it was just chemicals. Cl cloves. Yeah. Aren't cloves? Cloves. Herbal cloves. cigarettes. Cloves. Yeah. Those things, they'll tear your ass up. <laughs> those, those are terrible. You no. Know? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I never <laughs> tried those. <laughs> That's not how you're supposed to do them. <laughs> you do it a, wrong. I was a Marlboro Red guy for, <laughs> for a while. <laughs> I was a cool filter king. Ooh, gross. I know. Ooh. Those are those the are cool with the K O O with the little double O right there. Uh -huh. Wow. The menthol. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that brings back I some memories. Trash. Oh, and this is <laughs> that was trash. Yeah, it was trash. The menthol. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> God damn. Dude. Um, menthol. Uh -huh. but yeah. That's just then, then his and uncle, and it seems yeah. like there's, it seems like there's some tension between the two of them. I don't know what. Well, I think yet. so. The next scene is uh, is uh, Tommy's taking the horse to be checked out to be verified. Okay, I won this guy. I got this. Uh, I, I ruined my relationship with the Lee family to get this horse because they're going to recreate what they did with the last horse they had, mm -hmm. where they they won him first place, first place, first place. They got the bets high, and then he lost dead. And last. Charlie's like, "What the fuck are you?" And, doing? He, and he's like, "He's going to do it again with this horse." And Char and Charlie's like, "Bro." You did it once and it was risky enough. Now you're going to try to do the same thing again and you're pissing off the Lees. Mm -hmm. Here's a bullet for you. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, they gave this to hope me. Hope it was worth it. Yeah, hope it was worth it. Because the uncle doesn't know about the full plans either. No, no. no. Tommy's, does. Tommy keeps everything real close to the chest. 
I, I don't think he really confides in anybody except no. maybe Paul. He don't even fuck bitches. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say that. I was literally just about to say that. He don't even fuck women. <laughs> Man, he's got his... Liability. He's got his uh, opium. So he's, he's... Yeah, that's an interesting... Yes. They don't talk about it, but they always they show, show it. it. And they utilize... Can't otherwise. They utilize that as a way to show his PTSD with the, being yeah. in the yes. trenches. And, yes. Or the tunnel, sorry. He's a broken guy. He falls asleep, he's a broken he has like mind. a trauma dream. Yeah. 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 But if he drugs himself out, he can sleep for longer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic, and it's, it's and that comes into play later in the episode. Mm -hmm. I, I like that they show it, don't tell it, basically. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's good. It's just, yeah, that is just and we good get these glimpses of him having these trauma dreams, and they are traumatic. Oh yes. yeah, yeah. I mean, the one in it's this episode, claustrophobic and it's honestly, violent. and that's one of the reasons why in the first episode that um, comrade of his, he didn't kill him. He just said, "I'm going to make use of you somewhere." Right, else. Danny. Uh, yeah, Danny. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tommy has a great deal of. Um, empathy for people who are suffering from shell shock or PTSD. In mm -hmm. fact, we see it in this scene where the horse has like yeah. the, this like terrible reaction and, and Tommy like calms him down and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so it's at that point, yes, I think yes. that, that Tommy like creates a emotional connection with the horse, which makes what happens later mm -hmm. a little more tragic. Oh, yeah. that's true. Yeah. There's a scene where he's riding down right in front of the garrison, which is their bar. There's a loud noise and the horse freaks out because mm -hmm. it's not. Yeah. And, and I think, you're spot on with that. That's exactly the way it went, yeah. it went down. He's like, oh, this horse has a thing, which may just be a lack of training. I mean, I don't, I'm not, is it you a war a horse? Brain? Like, I have a fucked up Yeah, brain. yeah. I'm like, is the horse like from a war? Is it, did it, or is it just a normal? The horse just got spooked. Yeah, it just got spooked, but yeah. he, he but took it. I don't know. The horse has been living with the Lees and it's super fucking violent over there. Who knows what it <laughs> saw. It might be a carnival horse. I, yeah, I know. It could be a carny horse. Yeah. Mm. Um, remind me what the uh, oh Grace Grace is the the yeah. new bar Annabelle name. Annabelle Will Wallace or whatever her name is is that the actress's name yeah fantastic actress beautiful okay. she's very gorgeous. um Grace is the character name in the show and she takes a little bit more of a prominent role especially after this episode because something goes down where um she is basically required to go even deeper undercover <laughs> and it's like good luck darling <laughs> even deeper. required to get deep undercover <laughs> get <Yeah>. deep undercover <laughs> and basically yeah so they have an interaction because yeah. she's a spy well she she is adamant that she wants to bring singing back to the bar which Tommy had forbade mm -hmm. and the bartender the actual guy who owns the bar was too afraid to ask yeah. he's like I'm not gonna ask Tommy that no way no, mm -hmm. no 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 and she's like well then I'll do it and she confronts him and says, look, I, on Saturdays only, I want to have singing at the bar. I think it'll be good for everybody. Well, she sees Tommy coming down the street on the horse and she like makes, uh, makes yeah. this opportunity exactly. for him. Exactly. Yeah. And she's, he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I mean, I'm not, What do we know what his reasoning is for not allowing it? Is, there, is it just like a respect thing but, for the debt? It, what, it's what's, annoying. Well, one. He, what? He don't like, it's just annoying. He doesn't fuck women. So he's what just does that like, have to no, do with her singing at the bar though? He doesn't like happiness. <laughs> he's like you oh. <laughs> no I think he just finds it annoying because like later on when they are singing all of his brothers are like ribbing him and being like why the fuck did you allow this what like it's just like silly they think it's silly really yes huh um, it's a Shelby thing I guess I, I, I'm never I man, we don't fucking sing we I, don't fucking sing we don't fucking sing <laughs> I haven't quite figured out why he had a problem with it I was assuming it had something to do again with like his background or his PTSD or something like that but maybe 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 not I'm not sure um the next scene is that we're at the bookies. We're we're taking bets for the, for the new horse. So this is the new one, the, the white horse that he's walking. He's he's getting this all amped up. He's like taking bets. We know we're gonna win. Um, and this is setting up what happens a little bit later. And they show yes. them like dumping buckets money. of money out. Like people are betting on this horse. It's just when Polly comes in and tells him about data. Yes. Okay. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he's walking down the streets of Birmingham again because he's actually going to the place. And oh wait. Okay. See, I, I was a little bit confused here because I thought that this was the last race of the black horse that we were introduced to in season one because, you know, he won, he won, he won, and then he lost after, like, everyone bet on him. Right. And the white horse was just in the stables at his yeah. uncle's place. I didn't think that they had the the white horse ready to, to race. Here. Oh, is that what's Is this the last yeah. horse, for, uh, the last race for the horse from last episode? I think that, so, that, yeah. That's how I read yeah. it. Oh, okay. That's be, because they had built up his, his prowess at, at the racetrack with, mm -hmm. like, three consecutive wins. And oh. now that everyone in town is betting on him to win, he they, they, they it. tank it and and basically have this and huge And that's windfall. what gets Billy Kennedy. And that makes attention. much more sense because okay. I didn't really get that at first, but now it's like, oh. Yeah. Okay. Was there something that gave that away? That Because I didn't pick well, up on Well, he, he specifically said that he in did? the episode. Yeah. Like, like, like when, when, um, when Polly comes in to tell him about Ada, like he's sitting there with like all this money. 
and Polly's like, like, oh, oh, they just they yeah, he, she whispers at him. Um, it's it's but, inaudible, right? Yeah, that's why in in this in this scene she tell she whispers to him. And he goes right he back immediately out. leaves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but later on, when Billy Kimball actually shows up, like Billy they, Kemper. They, they yeah, well, whatever his name is, uh, <laughs> they actually they they, re, they reiterate what happened as okay. well. And like Billy Kimber uh, is Kemper. Kemper. Kem- Kem- You're terrible. Kemp- 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 yes, I am. I'm the destroyer King, of words. King yeah. Billy. King yeah. Billy. Uh, but but uh, he basically. Like reiterates, it's like okay, like you guys did this and you screwed me over, mm-hmm. and I don't like it. Mm-hmm. So um, it was it was explained a couple of times in the episode. So yeah. like, uh, but the white horse that um, the the new white horse that uh, um, Tommy got, uh, that's supposed to be the next horse that they pulled. Yes. The ski okay. With. All right. Yeah, that makes still sense. Still evaluating that horse. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate the clarification because I was you. a little lost on that one. Me too. Me too. I, um, yeah. I'm glad I'm not the only one. We don't want the comments <laughs> destroying us over a horse. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, so the next scene, uh, Tommy uh, confronts Ada at the uh, at the picture house. At he the makes theater. everybody leave, dude. This is a baller move. <laughs> that was a right? baller move. She's like, she lies to him and says some bullshit name that he's knows well, not. Well, well, that's well, the well, actor that yeah. was in the movie. Yeah, that, that's watching. a famous. Oh, actor. Is that, okay, is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. And so he says, everyone. <laughs> yeah, he Ru- has him Ru- stop Ru- the movie. Rudolph Valentino, I believe. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. like, give me a name. Yeah. And so she's watching a Valentino oh, movie. And yeah. She goes, Rudolph Valentino, because Ru- Valentino is supposed to be like a ladies' man. Oh, okay. Mm. Of the time. So it'd be like it'd be like some oh George Clooney, yeah, knocked you're right. Brad, oh, you're, you're, yeah, Brad Pitt, you're Brad Pitt. Yeah. Is showing William. I'm watching Brad Mission Pitt. Impossible. You come in, you're like, who's the father? I'm like, it's Tom Cruise. Thomas Cruise Mathapur the Fourth. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, old man. I don't know actors from the twenties. <laughs> Rudolph Valentino. <laughs> it's like saying you don't know who the fuck Charlie Chaplin is. Right? They, make, they make songs about him. Okay. Anyway. Charlemagne. Um, so he leaves, turns the movie off. Yeah. Like tells the projectionist, fucking shut that shit down. Yeah. Goes back, <laughs> tells everybody to leave. Everybody and then out. her entitlement comes in. I'm a Shelby. Turn the turn fucking movie on. off. Yeah. <laughs> that they was awesome. She's like, I'm a Shelby too. Yeah. The entitlement was <laughs> turn my movie good, but it works. Yeah. But it works though. Yeah, you don't mess with the Shelbys. No. I, I like that she has that, a little bit of power. She has enough power to turn the guy, you know, turn that thing back on. To get the movie watched. Let me, let me finish my movie. I, everybody knows you don't mess with her. As yeah. long as so. Tommy's not there. <laughs> Then she gets some power. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's pretty much. <laughs> uh, but he reacts about like you would think uh, when she tells him the actual name of uh, of who who the father is, yeah. and he. I think at that point, I don't know if he knows exactly what he's going to do, but he knows he has to do something. He's like, okay, this guy's got to. There's two different ways to look at it. Either he wants this guy out of the picture, mm-hmm. and he wants the baby out of the picture, like which is what Polly's kind of leaning towards, mm-hmm. or he's like, I'm going to make an honest woman out of my. Baby sister. Yeah. Well, to- uh, Freddie's a bit of a schemer as well. Mm. So I think that Tommy thinks that Freddie is using Ada in order to he get involved in the game. Oh, yeah. Also, Freddie is a communist and Tommy is a hardcore capitalist. Yeah. Like, like, he's like, I'm a business. But man. also the yeah. fact yeah. is, is that given how much heat that the communists have, like the government's trying to go off them, you don't want that type of attention yeah. on his yeah. business. Mm-hmm. That's uh, what I. That's what I kind of got from it. No, no like we, Sam Neill knows your name, dude. <laughs> with, with, mm. with this scene, is this the scene where um, Polly gives Tommy the letter that um, Ada wrote, or is that a little bit later? Frank. In the mm. Oh, because uh, Ada wrote a letter well, to. Yeah. Oh, that's later. Okay. Um. So. It's it's revealed Polly and uh, Tommy have a, a confrontation again after the race is won or lost, I guess, technically. Uh, they fix the race. The horse loses. He's got all this money on the table. Mm-hmm. And he's like, we're going to give it back to the people. And she's like, you're going to win your popularity back? And he's like, it's already done. And she's like, oh, very smart move. By the way, you pissed off the one dude you're not supposed to piss exactly. off. Yeah. She's, he's basically... So this goes to, to what you guys were and, saying and, earlier and about this the is, gypsies. Is this he's bait. purposefully baiting this yes. dude. Mm-hmm. Which is like, that's such a freaking crazy it is. move. And you know, the thing too is that, so about that, so he's basically, this is kind of a make good for what happened with Sam Neill and his crew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where basically it's like, uh, sorry guys, here's some here's some money for the people. Well, the cops came in and they were like putting people in, like seriously injuring people yeah. and destroying their property. Exactly. So Tommy comes in as like the big savior. Yeah. And he's like, hey, here, like take care of your, your stuff. Right. And it's also Robin to- Robin Hood's it. Yeah, and he, Robin, he Robin Hoods it. And also, it's to clear up any misconception that, hey, we were that he was involved. Yeah. 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 So, 
Baller move on all the parts. Yeah. And now that I've kind of un- like like that little piece of information that I was missing about him purposely pissing off the Lees. That I didn't know. Yeah. That, that was makes cool. this even so much more powerful because yes. now he's doing it to the freaking kingpin guy yeah. on Teachers. purpose. And here's what he's I- like orchestrating this whole like three way war. It's so well, crazy. Uh, also, so like they, they explain this like later on in the episode, but Billy Kimber. That right? Yeah, Kemper. That's Kemper. Kemper. Good job, Kimber. Billy Kemper. No, there's no P in there. There's no P. It's K I M B E R. That, that's oh, was it Kemper? I said Kemper. It's Kemper. Well, I said Kemper until okay. they, someone corrected it's me. Kemper. It's Kemper. It's Billy Kemper. Kemper. Okay. It's, it's not Billy Kemper. It's Kimber. All right, I'm looking it up right Google now. It. Christ, Google it. Google it. Calm down. Jesus fucking Christ. When, you know, when, when, <laughs> when King Billy shows up, he he's like, you know, uh, he says uh, his name a lot. Well, well no, he, he says, like, I didn't care about you guys until you did this. And then yeah. that got my attention. Well, he and, said, I haven't heard of you. And then yeah, I did hear. Yeah. But now I'm I, pissed. Yeah. It uh, is Kim Burr. Okay. Kim Burr. okay Kim so Kim I, Burr. I was correct. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Fair well, what I think uh, is so funny about the show <laughs> and so clever is that, like, you have, like, what you were saying earlier about, like, everybody's a bad guy. And but everybody's smart and they're all on the same level. And it's like, just who's worse. I'm pushing for this, and then and then the other guy pushes back, and they're all making like really smart moves. But you can tell Billy Kimber is adult. Oh yeah, oh, he's a yeah. moron. Yeah. Well, here's well, 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 like, well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Go on. But, like let's talk about this when we get to that actual scene. Yeah. But my point was is that uh, it was really interesting uh, because like Tom, Tommy Polly gets upset because she's like you don't pit, you don't cross Billy Kimber, and. But, but Tommy did it specifically so he could get the guy's attention because right. he knew that he was like a non-entity up until that point. Yes. So everything Tommy does is very calculated. Yeah, he's trying to it's, elevate it's, himself. It's, it's, it's social climbing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's not just empty social climbing. It's trying Business. to gain more power. Because honestly, look, yeah. Okay, so we'll get more. Yeah. Uh, so detective Sam Neill um, basically <laughs> contacts detective Tommy. Sam Neill. Yeah. Detect, uh, he contacts <laughs> Tommy after the burning of the king's pictures, which got in the papers, got, tea. he met. He, he's like, I purpose, high tea. He's yeah. like, I'm, I purposely met in a place that was outside both of our jurisdictions, so we could talk man to man. And this scene, dude, Ooh. oh Ooh. my god, I love that scene so. Killian much. Murphy just chews this scene up, and yes, those those long shots of him with the freaking sun in his face, those ice cold blue eyes, and he's just staring Sam Neil down, and they they kind of they they play each other's cards, right? Yeah. Sam Neill puts his cards down. He's like, I know you're involved. I want to do this. You know, I know you're doing this. I'm going to take your family down, yada, yada, yada. And Tommy's like, okay, this is the moment that I've been holding on to these freaking weapons for. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait. Here, go ahead. So Sam Neill says, oh, you have demands? Oh, do Oh, I forgot my pen to write down your list of demands. Tommy hands him a pen. A pen. Yeah. <laughs> a pen. But I think what's great is that, you know, one, Sam Neill probably wishes he was in front of a Velociraptor then. <laughs> <laughs> Two... I loved it where it's like, he said, you'll do this for me, you'll do this for me, you'll do this for me. And he's just like, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> what am I going to get? Basically, <laughs> why would I ever do that? And he's like, well, well let I me got tell what you, you want. Why. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The best part is where he's like, I got your guns. And Sam Neill's like, what guns? And Tommy just gets up. He gets yeah, up. He's, he's like, like, I'm, like not, I'm not here for games. <laughs> yeah, I'm not here for games. He's like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> 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 what a baller move. Yeah. yeah, this whole thing. Tommy just railroads this guy. Oh, yeah. Just hardcore. And it, it leaves him like he's on his heels at this point. He's like, how do I respond to this? Yeah. Which we find out in a little bit. He does have a response for it. Um, he's like, pardon me for not shaking your hand. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I'd well, rather not I shake, shake this the hand of a man, a man who, who never, never fought, fought for his country. country. Oh, oh <laughs> Establishing the pecking order right of fucking Yeah, man. yeah. They keep holding this over him. Oh yeah, and it's like, ah oh, man, how do you how do you freaking argue against the pen? <laughs> yeah, but this scene. And then he picks up his pen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he I mean, takes his I takes mean, his pen back. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 what's what's great about it is like so Sam Neill, it's like a backhanded uh, kind of like insult to Tommy, where he's like, I don't trust criminals, so like mm-hmm. I'm not going to shake your hand on it. And then Tommy's just like, well, I don't trust people who dodge the draft. So yeah. like, I, I'm not going to take your hand bah, either. Bah, bah. Yeah. Yeah. Love, it. Love it. But this, to me, I think this might be the best scene in this episode. Oh, yes. Is the confrontation between these two. Because this is their first face-to-face meeting. Yes, yeah, they've, they've never actually had any kind of confrontation before this. It's always been a name. Uh, so this was this was and, phenomenal. And, and what's great is like you compare this to when like Sam Neill went after uh, Arthur in the first episode yeah. where bas- basically like he just owned Arthur. Like he just like beat the shit out of him. And in all fairness, Arthur didn't even know what game he was playing. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah, and and in this episode, basically, so like you have Sam Neill who like won the first round with the Peaky Blinders, kind of won the second round with the with Polly, 
But uh, by the time like he confronts like the real boss, he's like, getting phone calls from Winston Churchill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yes. what the fuck, man? <laughs> he gets his ass kicked. And this is one of those great writing techniques where it's like, okay, like you have to have somebody get defeated before like their yes. ultimate victory actually has like any purpose. To and, it. and also, when you think about it, Sam Neill came to their territory mm -hmm. and kind of owned them on that, whereas now they're in neutral ground because Tommy kind of did some back behind the scenes mm -hmm. back backseat shenanigans and basically now they're in this almost kind of area that they don't belong where they're in this very kind of classic aristocratic aristocratic yeah. and that I, both of them don't belong again, to again to to shout out the cinematography for this there was a there was a shot of this scene where it's like literally just Sam Neill's like shoulder and above mm -hmm. but the entire screen is just this wallpaper they of were basically scene. in downtown abbey for yeah yeah they were in downtown they were in high Claire castle right yeah. <laughs> outside of all of the like the horrors that we're dealing with in the rest of the show yeah, uh -huh. yeah. and in many ways the light was on kill tommy yeah and he was in shadow sam neil was in shadow oh, that's interesting you're right yeah you're right uh the next scene i think this is when uh detective campbell is like okay i've got one card i can play and it's Grace, who is embedded in the bar, and she's behind the scenes. <laughs> he placed her there. I need to leverage this against what he just leveraged against me. Is, is this back and forth? <laughs> like, I'm not going to tell you to fuck him, but, but you should fuck him. Should probably. <laughs> he gives her and the he creepiest line. And you know, and he also what? and he also tried to be like, oh well, you know, you're like a daughter to me, but you need to fuck him. That's that's what I'm saying. That was the creepiest shit. This is like a father sending his daughter to a whorehouse. Don't say that. <laughs> that makes it worse. Yeah, and he's so creepy. And then when she's leaving, he like grabs her hand. And My he's heart like, is with My you. My heart is. Fuck off. <laughs> she's like, you underestimate me in every way possible. Well, she said, this is what I've trained for. Yeah. Which is interesting because we don't really know a lot about what she was trained for, which I guess is undercover work. Yeah. I mean, she's, she's Black Widow. Yeah. yeah. I think she's a Black Widow. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think yeah. honestly, I mean, I think when they mean trained... I mean, their school. She's a their women. honeypot agent. She's a honeypot. Thank you. That's yeah. exactly. Yeah, she's a honeypot. Yeah, and so uh, I know what she's been trained in. The opera that they're at. Does anybody know the details between what opera it is? Is there? Is I it like don't. a famous one or anything like that? But it, it, it basically it's mirroring what is oh, happening. It, it, in this it's story. a play about a woman who betrays a man. Right. And so, like, that's kind of mm, foreshadowing. Yeah. About, like stabs. It's foreshadowing yeah. what what Grace and, and Tommy are going to be like Oof. moving forward. Which again, just another great little show, don't yes. tell. Just put those layers in there yes. and let people figure it out. And then yes. dummies like me have it explained to me by my friends. Well, also <laughs> the funny the funny part is uh, like Sam Neill's character, like he's sitting there, he's just so bored with the fucking opera and everyone else is there. It's like high society and they're like, oh. oh, oh. Again, <laughs> and he another made her meet him there so that he could show her like that he's above all of this criminal element. Like he, he specifically had her meet him at the opera as like a move. You well, know, I, actually, I, I, thought, I, thought, I, thought, cover. I thought she, they met there because no one else would. There was see no them. one else that, that they're involved with. That's what I'd be going to the he opera. Could have met her anywhere. Well, he was eh, like, I'm showing you this well, other. Well, also at the opera, the singing and stuff is so loud that people yeah. can't eavesdrop. Off That's what I took it as. Okay, let's meet in a place where nobody from the Shelby family is going to be. There. Yeah, they're nobody's not. Nobody's going to recognize there. either of us. No, and it's going to be loud enough where we're. I figured it's the same thing as what happened in the first episode where they met at this museum, mm -hmm. right? Because it's like the Shelbys aren't going to be here. Yeah. So it's like there's you know, no Peaky Blinders at the museum. Or yeah, no yeah. no blindness to be peeking in. <laughs> I don't disagree with you, but also he keeps picking classy places yeah. to meet her at mm -hmm. to try to because he likes her. Oh. He wants to woo her, you even think, though he, even though he calls mm, her his daughter. I don't, think so. I don't know I don't think about so. a love interest. I don't think oh, about love interest. He wants her. Really? Yes. Oh, there's something you know that we don't know. I don't know. No, her. You've seen because you've seen it. I have seen it before, but I think it's obvious that he's like. The reason he's having such a hard time with this is because she's beautiful. <laughs> I don't get that at all. I think 100%. it's a, I think it's a father daughter thing because what did he served with her father? So well, he didn't I, serve. He didn't serve. Well, well, well you know, like in the police, in the police force. force. Okay. In the yeah, police yeah, force. yeah. Her, her father and was a detective. He were best friends on the force. Yeah. And when the father was killed by the IRA, he took mm. her under his wing as like a surrogate daughter. And she because turned kind of, into a beautiful woman that he wants to fuck. I think yeah. you're reading Well, because too much he, into that. and also when you think about it, that's true. The IRA killing her father kind of radicalized her into, to take right. down whatever. Yeah. It also made him the one who took down the IRA as like a revenge thing too. Yeah. Right. Because that's, that's where he got his claim to fame from. Mm, yes. He took down. He took it down as, re as like revenge that. on them killing his friend. Now he gets to fuck his daughter. I, I don't think that's <laughs> I don't think so. No, I, I don't think so. No, I think you're wrong, Jude. Anyway, all right. The next scene. Um, 
Some it's gonna man. be a reckoning one day. Uh, well, we'll see. I mean, <laughs> I might, man. I might have to eat crow. I don't know. Haven't you guys seen this show? I haven't. It's been so long, dude. Season one. You know how long ago this show came out? It came out a while ago. Yeah, I watched the show when it first came out, dude. This is a while ago. <laughs> uh, the next scene: downpouring rain. Um, a slightly not all there in the upstairs. Curly. Uh, Curly. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Is this our first introduction to Curly, yeah. or has he been around? So. Uh, he he was there to shake the horse, right? He he, he, he was in, he was in the first episode, but like he didn't very see briefly. Anything. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Curly goes and gets Tommy and says, basically, shit, you got to come out here. There's something wrong with this horse. And uh, so Tommy runs out, and they're like, it's a curse. They're they're t- they keep talking about this gypsy curse, like they. They pissed off the gypsies. Everybody knows you got a fight with the Lee family. And now this horse all of a sudden came down with this incurable hoof disease. Yeah. And it's like it's spreading. 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 And then Curly's like, it's going to hit its heart. Yeah. It's going to hit its heart, Tommy. By tomorrow, it'll be dead. And uh, this forces Tommy's plans to just go all fucked up. Yeah. Um, And he has to put the horse down, which is, I think, what you were mentioning before about how the horse, like he, Tommy kind of sees something in himself in the horse with the, it's freaking out about the loud noises and stuff. There's a part of Tommy that um, wants to help traumatize people because Mm -hmm. he himself is traumatized. Mm -hmm. And so like when he sees uh, people suffering, uh, especially like people who fought in the war, he can relate to that. And so he wants to help. And, you know, he has this connection with the horse. The horse basically had uh, some type of hoof infection that is working its way to its heart. So it's got like maybe 24 hours to live Mm -hmm. because they caught it late. And basically, uh, you know, Tommy's like, well, the humane thing to do is to put a bullet in its head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it fucks him up because like, uh, in a weird way, Tommy relates to horses more than humans. In fact, (laughs) he even says this in the next scene where he's like, I got used to seeing men die in the war. I've never gotten used to seeing horses die. He says horses die. die yeah, they die in a bad and, and way. You know, and you know another thing yeah. too. Before we even before this scene, we actually see kind of juxtaposed. And again, this is why the show's so good. Mm. Juxtaposed to Sam Neill and Grace kind of having their conversation, we also see Tommy having his nightmares. Yes, we see Tommy having his nightmares, and we also see him self medicating with whatever I the think, opium. opium. Yep. So we see that, and again, we don't have any audio when he's doing it. We just see it. Yep. And so then after killing the horse, he's kind of, and so he then goes, goes to, the, to bar. the bar. Yeah. Um, now I want to point something out because it was something that I picked up on and I don't know, maybe, the, maybe I'm wrong, but you are. they, <laughs> they inspected the horse uh, at least two times. Yes. They inspected the horse while they were with the gypsies mm-hmm. in their encampment. They, mm-hmm. lo- they, they showed him looking up the hoof and checking everything to make sure it's healthy and all that stuff. Yes. And then they checked a second time when they were in Birmingham. And he was like, he was checking out the horse and he had Curly check it out. And everybody mm-hmm. said, everything's, yeah, it's a good horse. Everything's mm-hmm. fine. Everything's cool. And then all of a sudden with, like you said, we caught it late. It's too late to save the horse. It's going to die in 24 hours. All of a sudden it has this freaking disease. Mm-hmm. That's where I'm like, there, there's real freaking magic in this show. Mm-hmm. Like they definitely are leaning into the fact that this is a real curse that happens with these gypsies. I love that aspect of it. I think it just adds this little element of chaos to the show. It's that, uh, yes. <laughs> That's really cool. That's really cool. We're just going to gush over this show for two hours, guys. That's a wee bit. Um, okay, so Tommy goes, did you have anything that you wanted to mention about the the curly coming in and saying the horse is all fucked up? Is there anything that you caught? I think that there is room for suspicion as far <laughs> <Okay>. as... Like, <laughs> Are you not as sold as I am on this? It could be the curse. It could also be that they pumped this horse full of like steroids or something mm. to... Uh, just make this deal. Uh, mm. So, like, I, I kind of like to think that, like, Tommy was cheating in the game and the Lees were also cheating in the game. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. That's my thing. Yeah. Never trust a gypsy. Not so much. <laughs> or the Romani, whatever they call Romania. themselves. Now. Um, okay. So, Tommy, in response to having to put his uh, prize horse down, he goes back to his bar, the garrison, and Grace is there by herself. Mm. And um, she's basically, again, trying to bring up the idea of, like, hey, can we, you're going to bring singing up. Again, because mm-hmm. this is what I want to do. I believe it'll help. And she's also, trying after this is trust. after the fact, this is also her trying to get in deeper with the Shelby family. She's like a siren. That's how she gets yes. it. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I talked siren. about that last episode. I'm like, yeah, she's she's acting as this like mm-hmm. controlling unit for the, for the luring Shelby. Yeah, luring sailors into everybody death. In, Making yeah. them feel more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. But what's interesting about this scene is so like this is Tommy at his most vulnerable right yeah. now. Yes. With but, anyone, but but he also shows that like like he he's he's like, 
you're a liar. I know you're a liar. I had people ask around yes. like where you came from and no one's ever heard of you at that bar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can tell on Grace's face, like she's oh, like, shit. Oh, oh shit. But then Tommy, like, like he basically gives her an out like unwittingly because he, yeah. he's thinking about like his sister and stuff like that. It's like, I bet you're a rich girl who got pregnant and uh, you know, you had to leave town. Yes. And, and so like Grace just latches onto that. She's like, oh, don't tell anyone my secret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah, she kind of had this oh shit look on her face when he kind of asked around because I'm like, yeah, he, but, he knows people. But, but, it, but it also shows like how thorough Tommy is because like you have like a barmaid who just like showed up. She's pretty. And he's, he's like, you know what? I'm not going to just trust that this is like, you know, mm -hmm the way things are. I'm going to actually no like, one. yeah, I'm actually going to check out, do a background check on her and make sure that she's like legit. And so like, you know, it just goes to show like how he stands on business. I have a problem with that though. Why? Because how does a detective like Sam Neill, Detective Campbell, Jim Bell Tyson, and, Jim Bell Tyson <laughs> and Grace not come up with an alibi that can be at least verified on a surface level? Well, there's 1919. There's 1919. And here's the thing. There's, yeah, there's no computers. There's no computers, but at the same time, there's also street knowledge. The streets are talking, the streets sure. are watching. Sure. So people are going to be like, there might be, she gave a name as to where she came from. But if it's a real place, then he can go and find somebody who knows somebody who goes there. The, the, the thing is, is I don't think, like, Sam Neill has a very low opinion of criminals. Like, yeah. he wasn't yes. expecting a Tommy Shelby. Yes. Okay. So, like, most criminals would just be like, oh, she's hot. Let, let's, you know, like, I just accept her at her word. But Tommy was, was like, um, you know, he, he, he wasn't manipulated by her beauty and he had connections in Belfast. And so he reached out to his connection. He's like, hey, what's up with this girl? Can you verify this story? Mm -hmm. And the only reason that, you know, that happened is because Tommy is a fucking criminal mastermind. But Sam mm. Neill was expecting a Billy Kimber. Well, he was expecting Arthur. He was expecting yeah. Arthur. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Yes. Yeah. And then he got... And Billy Kilmer, by extension, because he's kind of like a mouth breather, like you said. Well, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like he's not that smart. You think Billy Kimber is going out and, and like yeah. checking Absolutely alibis? Not. No. And that's, and that's the thing, is that what he got was Jonathan Crane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then <laughs> so. in this scene is one of the most famous scenes in this entire show. That is, It's all over social media. Every time, oh, really? I, every time I see something about Peaky Blinders, it's always like referencing this scene where she's okay. like, happy or sad? Oh, yeah. And he's like, sad. I'll break your heart. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Sorry, bro. It was just like oh. I see that scene did catch, everywhere. Did you catch that? Like he actually starts to nod off. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, I saw that. And this is like the first time that we see him able to sleep, sleep. without drugs. Yes. I, did, yeah. I did catch that. Yeah. yeah, he he's in his chair, and the the camera kind of steps back, and it's not moving, and it's all it's just her standing there, and not and Tommy just kind of like slumped. He slumped down. over. Yeah. Finally, fell asleep. I God, caught that. The show is so freaking good. Just so good. <laughs> I caught that. I was like, oh, that's awesome. I miss good TV. God I damn love it. <laughs> good, intelligent TV that yes. doesn't treat people like idiots, that doesn't dumb shit down. Yeah. House of Dragons, take notes. <laughs> and, and then we get C. <laughs> we get C. <laughs> Where it's like, God damn it. I love that show too, though, because it's so dumb and cute. What's I, uh, what's C? I was going through my t shirts C. the other day and I found my Chet Chet shirt. Nice. <laughs> Wait, Chet Chet. Uh, C is that Apple TV show um, that is, is created by the same person who created oh, C. Blinders. Oh, oh, C, C. Okay, yeah, yeah, S-E-E. -E. Yeah, yeah. you, you just gotta go watch it, bro. Yeah, so where everyone's blind except yeah. for like one kid. Except for a couple kids, yeah. And yeah. then you got some really good praying going on. <laughs> praying is a very important thing. I am curious. So it only Weird went three names, Drill Morel. It only went three seasons, right? Yep. Yeah. I'll have to check yeah. it out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, three. <laughs> okay. Um, Drill Morel and Paris. Because <laughs> <laughs> of course. Because of course. God, I love how goofy that show is. <laughs> All right. The next scene is uh, Ada is heading to the train station with Polly, and she's like, look, we're going to go take care of this. We're going to get you out of town. We're going to do something really bad, and then we're going to bring you back, and it's like nothing We'll get you a happened. treat. We're going to get you a treat we're after. We're going to lollipop after you go to the doctor. And yeah. then who do they find at the train station? Freddy? Freddy. 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 Freddy's Freddy? there. Freddy. Oh, yeah. Freddy. Now, this is interesting because Freddy got, got the message. Tommy earlier on the episode sent an, uh, a letter basically saying, I think, it never tells you outright what it says, but I think what his impression was or what the impression I got was, uh, Tommy's yeah. like, you're going to make an honest woman out of this, out of my sister. Yeah. You're going to freaking marry her, and then you're going to get the hell out of town yeah. and out of my face. He says, come back, grab Ada, and get out of town. Yeah. Yes. Take Mar her with you. Yeah, take her with you. If you love her, take her with you. Mm -hmm. And this is when this freaking bonehead, oh, I dumb fucking hate him. as oh, fuck. I hate because me. dumb as fuck. He, he's like, I want to marry you. And Ada's so happy. And Polly's like, oh my God, this is all fixed. Everything's fine. And now fine. That they have this situation where he has to man up and marry her and be the father of her child or it fucks up the Shelby family. Now yeah. all of a sudden he's like, I'm not, I'm not afraid of Tommy. I'm not afraid. I'm going to stick around. He does like a 180 <laughs> in, in 30 seconds. And here's and the it, thing. He says it when Tommy's not there. And it pissed yeah. me off so yeah. much. 
And I'm like, bro, you had the golden ticket. Freddy's a fucking idiot. <laughs> well, what, what's interesting about Freddy is that he he truly does love Ada. Yeah, sure, yeah. Like, yeah. like he, he cares about her. He's very happy that he's going to be a father. He's all on board about marrying her. Mm -hmm. the, the interesting thing about this scene, though, is that so earlier in the episode, um, Ada had written a, a note that was to be delivered to him, mm. uh, to Frankie, uh, basically saying, like, you know, what her situation was and what she wants to do and all this other stuff. Please come back and marry and, me. Yeah, and, and Tommy basically burns it. Yeah. Mm. And because I think Tommy knows that if this came from Ada, uh, it would give Frankie, like, no reason to come right. back, but Freddie. But if it came from Tommy, Tom, like, Freddie would know that basically... Um, I know. Like, like, like he, he has Tommy's blessing to, like, marry Ada, and yes. that's the only thing that would keep him from doing it. Well, that's why I'm they, really, they kept I'm, their relationship secret the this whole like, time was because Freddie was afraid of Tommy finding out. I'm just really afraid, afraid of Tommy. For Lee <laughs> came back to marry her. For Lee, do the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> the murderer of yeah. names. You know, Frank. I'm glad Frank came back. Yeah, Cillian Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. We're just fucking with you. You know, a lot um, of people have trouble with his name. It's Cillian Murphy. <laughs> it's Killian. Killian. I've, I've heard it both ways. Just <laughs> listen to an interview. He says Killian. it himself. Killian. I always try to find interviews where the actor says their own name or something like that. Or like, hey, I'm Killian. And I've seen the name before, but it's usually with a K. That's why. So I guess but it's, this might be the Irish version. It's Freddie, right? I think so. Freddie. The communist. So he, he just stood me when he said Frank. The, the goddamn commie. Who's the commie? <laughs> so it starts okay. with an F. Yeah, yeah it's, fine. it's an F name. All right. So here's one thing: when we finally meet, and so this is the end of the episode. Yeah, the end of the episode. They're at the garrison. The Shelbys are in their private room. Everybody's the bar's full. They're singing, and then the king walks in. Right, the quote unquote uh, king. Well, he Broad sends king. two goons in with guns. <laughs> oh yeah, no, he's got muscle, yeah. which is what what Tommy wants out of this relationship. Yeah. Is like you've got muscle, I've got brains. Yeah, let's go, bro. <laughs> and the thing about it is, this is what I noticed about Billy Kimber. He loves throwing his dick around. Oh, yeah. yeah. He yeah. loves saying his name. He loves sh people showing deference to him. He clearly has a Napoleon complex. Well, here the beautiful part about this, and it reminds because I, I just started rewatching uh, Game of Thrones, the original show. Okay. And uh, there's, I'm, I'm, at the, I'm at the part of uh, the end of Joffrey's reign, right? And this scene with, uh, with I don't know, Billy big, Kember. Billy, whatever, the big dick Billy. I um, am the king. Right. He says, he says multiple times, I'm the fucking boss. I'm the king. And immediately, and I'm like, Tywin Lannister. Anybody who says that I oh, are the king is no king. And I'm like, oh, shit. So, uh, <laughs> one of the great things about Peaky Blinders is how they always introduce their bad guys. Mm -hmm. right? Like, they give their bad guys, like, some... Pomp and circumstance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like some, some big dick energy, like, right <laughs> off the bat, right? Yeah. And Billy Kimber is, is, is no exception because, like, he walks in. And then there's this fantastic exchange where... He's trying to figure out like who's in charge, and, yes. and Arthur's like, "Well, I'm the oldest," and he's he's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Oh, thanks for telling me that." And like, like, obviously, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, 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 he, and, he, and he's like, and, "And you're the thick one," mm -hmm. uh, so that means I must be talking to you. And, but then Tommy clocks the fact that the guy's accountant slash advisor is, yeah. the is the real is the real brains behind the operation. Yes. So he's like, "Am I talking to you? or Am I talking yes. to you?" Yeah, yes. he basically turns great. it around he on turns him. it right around yeah. on. Yeah. And, 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 and the advisor guy. Clocks that, and he's like, he's like, huh. oh, okay, maybe we should recognize the game. <laughs> game, recognize game. Like you're, you're eyeballing me up and down like I'm a fucking tart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you I are. <laughs> yeah, I love it. That was great because yeah, and when he, and he was the one who was sitting first, he was the one who was doing the negotiate. Yes, and then he brings up the whole thing with the, and then I saw that the thing with the leaves and the balls. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. That's so brutal. he's been, yeah, he's he's playing forty chess over here with yeah. this, and then. So the, this king guy, um, I, I can never remember his name. What is it? Billy? Billy. Billy. Kemper. Billy Kemper. King George. Thro throws a freaking coin down on the ground. And he's basically like, like kneel and pick That's it up. That's basically kneel, so kneel before you're king. Bend the yeah. knee. Yeah, bend the knee. John starts to get it for him. Dude. And Tommy's like, don't you fucking Shut the you fucking fuck yeah. <laughs> Sit down. Sit your ass don't down. Don't ruin my plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he picks it up and he's like, thank you, king. Appreciate it. He puts it. He just feads into his ego because yes. he knows this guy's super egotistical. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What were you That's gonna say? I no, I, I'm good. Oh, are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's what I saw too. It's like feeding into this ego. He he's, had to. He, he's like, no. That what he said. He wants to think he's the boss because he said nobody works with me. Yeah, uh -huh. they work for me, and that's what. I say. So Tommy clocks the idea that this accountant guy is actually the brains behind it, mm -hmm. but he will always wants to think he's in charge. Yeah. So he's feeding his ego while doing business with the actual brains of the operation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And, and that fucking brilliant. And, and as Tommy starts talking about you know the the Lee family, uh, the advisor guy, the accountant guy, 
he's just sitting there watching him and he he's like, you know, Billy, I think that we should mm -hmm. you know, hear him out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but instead of storming out. And it was really interesting the the way that this scene unfolded because as soon as the the Kimbers leave, the Kimber mob, mm -hmm. uh, basically Arthur's like, you know, you orchestrated the the feud with the Lees for this very reason. Yep. And, yes. and, and at that point, the audience realizes oh. that Tommy is playing 4D chess here. Yeah. Like, like he, he, he basically, he knew that this guy had problems with the Lees and therefore by having a common enemy and, and providing a solution to like help fight the Lees and like, he's like, we know how they work. We know how they operate, blah, blah, blah. The enemy of my enemy. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, he basically uh, became valuable to the Kimber organization and the guy who's really in charge who came to check these guys out uh, recognized that. And so mission accomplished by Tommy. And it, it was just, it was such a beautiful moment because mm -hmm. at that moment you realize, because, you know, if you were to just watch the opening of this episode, much like Charles, you'd be like, oh, he's, he's being kind of stupid. Mm -hmm. But then like you realize that everything Tommy does has There's a, a reason. reason to Once it. Once they realize he's orchestrated this entire episode, Tommy walks out like a boss and he says, get yourself some decent haircuts, boys. Yeah, Go we're going to, the races. going to the races. <laughs> I love that. It was and, great. I, and I love the fact that um, it was just, even when something comes his way, something out of left field, he's able to pivot. Yeah. Like what happened with the raid. Well, he always has a plan B. Yes. Yeah. Or he always has a response that will leverage his loss as a win. Exactly. Eventually. Yeah. And so when they attack and they tried to slander them, they used the race money to pay everyone back. Uh -huh. He was able to use the power of the press and also his reputation as a war hero. Yeah. That made him a bit untouchable now to Sam Neill. He's the new apex predator of yeah. Velociraptor. Yeah. So. What a great second episode of this yes. season. It yep. just, it sets everything up. We, we're, I, th I feel like it's so fleshed out that we all know the pieces on the table now and we we're do. all able to follow it. And it's, it's so... Well, clean and intelligent and smart and you're just like okay I'm ready for the next take one take an entire season to tell us who everybody was I didn't know <laughs> and, also, <laughs> and this is the end of the first act of season one so it's like six episodes long right. so the first two episodes of act one we're now moving into act two and then we'll have act three in an epic conclusion I'm sure I can't wait to talk about the next episode it's so hard for me to just watch one episode of this show yes. I can't wait to meet Alfie Solomon Alfie. Oh, Alfie. Alfie. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, shit. I can't wait for him. And one to... of his more unrecognizable I... accents. <laughs> what? Let's not talk about it. Okay, but let's not talk about it. Don't ruin it. Don't ruin it for the guy who hasn't seen it. Well, you haven't seen it yet. Either. I haven't seen it either. So how do you know about him? Well, we'll I've talk seen, about it later. All right. Clips. <laughs> I've seen clips. He's seen TikTok. All right. Fair enough. TikToks. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. I had a blast talking about this episode. Likewise. This was so fun. And I actually learned a little bit. Me too. I, every time we talk about this, I'm like, oh, I totally missed that one little hint. And like you guys always bring it up. And I'm like, oh, it makes it so much better. He's very much Tommy. Like I can compare Tommy Shelby to, even though I forgot the character's name, Robert De Niro's character in Heat. Yeah, sure. Uh, sure. He kind of yep. had these 4D chess plans mm -hmm. in order to get what he wanted. So. Yeah. And Al Pacino is Sam Neill. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Well, he's, he, 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 you know, he, he'll get his hands dirty though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching the show. Please comment below your favorite part of the episode and stay tuned. We're going to be doing episode by episode throughout season one. And then, uh, if, if with the reaction to the show is good enough, then we'll, we might just keep on going. So, uh, we might comment. just keep on going anyway. Cause it's so fun. To it's so fun. And it's <laughs> so, it's so nice to have like good, well thought out, intelligent show yes. to watch. Like I know that like there's a lot of shows out there and some are really good and some are just kind of like. Drizzling the shits. And it's like, God damn it. They just keep milking the same freaking IP. We for should watch whatever. the finale here and do a reaction for the paywall. Yeah, I'm I'm we need a TV first. Oh, I'll, I'll have it's it up. It's in the other room. I'll have it up. I'll have it up. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Stay salty. We'll see you next week. Pinky fucking blind us. There you go. <laughs> <laughs>